Here's another life for you. Enjoy. This one is a winner. It's decadent but delicious. Let Hi, me know if you everyone. make it. It is Rebecca here. Welcome along. Uh, thank you if you're watching this on replay. I will be sharing this on my YouTube and Facebook as well. Uh, tonight I'm making family chicken galette. And there's a, bit, there's a dish going around that's a bit viral, I guess. Um, I think I'm coming in on the new end of it. Maybe I'm going to be told that I'm not. Uh, I saw a TikToker make it and someone shared it. So I went, ooh, I can thermi, thermify it, thermify it, whatever you want to call it. But what I've done is I've changed the recipe to suit the Thermomix because it asked for you to use like a stock cube or something. So I'm using our stock paste and I've uploaded it to my creative recipe. So I'm going to follow it on the screen and do it in a Thermomix way. So there is so many um, recipes out there that you can thermo convert. And to be quite honest, there's a hell of a lot of recipes out there that we probably have the same recipe somewhere in Thermomix world that you could just use whatever ingredients and do your own version of it. All right, so I imagine my daughter's going to get dropped back any minute. So if I disappear off screen, quickly say hello to the lovely parents that have taken her on a little outing today. Uh, please excuse me. I'm just going to make sure I can see you. Hey, Zach, how is everyone? Tell me what you're having for dinner tonight. Let me know what's happening at your place. Let's start cooking with the family chicken galette because we've got to make the pastry. So I put a call out recently to the followers who... What would you like to learn? What do you want to feel confident with? Um, et cetera, et cetera. Now, pastry or particularly puff pastry came up. Um, look, to be honest with you all, puff pastry is a full day of work. Um, and it's one of those things that I say, pick your battles. If you want to make it, fantastic, make it. Uh, otherwise, if you want to buy it, I would highly recommend the butter puff pastry much nicer far less ingredients in it but if you do want to make it be prepared to be making your puff pastry putting it in the fridge coming back hours later rolling it out again putting it back in the fridge coming back sometime later rolling it out putting it back etc etc okay it's not a five minute job however things like the pastry part of this recipe the pastries that go with the quiches, they're all fantastic recipes. So please, please, please don't be put off. Just give it a go, but follow the instructions, okay? So we want chilled water, frozen butter for this one. I have been known to make this pastry in the morning because this recipe has three components and I will be using both machines to speed it up. Oh, I love scotch broth. I'm coming over. <laughs> Um, yes, so with this, don't be afraid, just give it a go. Um, follow the instructions, as I was saying. Sorry, I got distracted by reading comments. And um, yeah, this one, three components, you can certainly make them. I've done the pastry sometimes in the morning. I've made the bacon jam part the day before. Okay. They're good, Zach. How are you going? Alright, so I've got prepped up ingredients here in front of me, and I normally do all my prep with you live, but today I thought the galette is a timely recipe, okay? It's not something you want to make when you get home from. Oh, sorry, I lost you there for a minute on the recording. Um, so, yeah, definitely not something I would make late at night when I've just got home from work because that requires, uh, you know, a 30-minute meal. This is when you've got time to do it. Or, as I said, break it down in components. Make the pastry, stick it in the fridge. Make the jam, stick that in the fridge, and then just build it all. So, brilliant. Hello, everyone. All right, so that now is mixed up that pastry. So this is a very light flaky pastry recipe um, and we use frozen butter so we have the butter from the freezer and chilled water and what that means is you don't want to put your hot hands on it too much either because you will 
We want to keep the butter cold and the reason why is because that is what gives us the flakiness in the pastry. So if you're touching it too much, you are going to find that it is um, not going to be as flaky. Okay, so the least amount of hands and warmth go onto it, the better. All right, so sorry, my phone's going off. I've got messages coming in as we are live as well. So uh, getting it all out and look, it does pretty much tend to come out in one big hump bundle. Um, and that's what we're left with there. I'm not going to worry about that little tiny bit. All right, so now it says to put it on a lightly floured silicon mat or work surface and shape into a ball. As I said, try not to touch it too much because you want to keep the chunky bits of butter for the flakiness in your pastry, yeah? All right, so I'm just going to roll that over. Roll it over. And then what we've got to do, if you look next, is wrap it and put it in the fridge for 20 minutes. So this is what I mean about, you can certainly make this in the morning and put it in the fridge for the whole day or even make it the night before. Bear in mind, you want to take it out of the fridge a good little bit before you're going to start baking with it because it will be rock solid. The butter will go back to really hard. But then at the same time, to keep the flakiness, you want to also make sure that you're not doing that for um, letting it melt for too long, right? So there is a fine line there, but it's pretty forgiving. Just try and keep it as chilled as you can. So in the fridge there, in my mat, I find that's the easiest way to deal with it because then we're going to roll it out into a circle and I'm going to cook it when we build the galette. So in the interest of keeping this all going, I am just going to jump ahead and grab another bowl and keep going with the rest of the recipe. So, yeah. Zach, look, lots of people are very, um, I think maybe not, aware that puff pastry is actually, it is a full day job. It's a long job. So um, it's definitely not something that you want to do if you haven't got the time to do it because you really do need to put it in, bring it out, put it in, bring it out. Yeah, there's a few steps to it, isn't there? It's not a, here it is, it's done and it's all um, finished. Uh, let me just grab a container to put this sweet potato I've cut up ready into. So that is just uh, diced sweet potato. That's part of the chicken galette. Um, this one requires chicken tenderloins, but I'm sure if you cut your breast finely enough, uh, it'll be fine. Um, this now says one garlic clove. So we all know for me that's normally more, but this is for the jam part. Oh, actually that garlic clove looks like it's had it looks a bit brown and rotten so we'll leave that one out we won't have him uh, this is the bacon jam part of the recipe so as I said three components definitely split it up you can definitely do it uh, I'll put two of those you can definitely do days ahead and then build it just so that you can bake it and have it on a weeknight when you're home a bit later um, because you're just literally going to put it all together. The chicken cooking part isn't the biggest part of the recipe. I think it's actually the easiest part, personally. Um, let's just use that lid. Alright, so we're just going to chop that up. And then we want some unsalted butter to add to that. So... I want to make these Hasselback potatoes that I've seen going around. All right, we want to scrape that down. So that's the garlic all topped up for anyone that might be new here and doesn't know what this machine does. So you're just chopping that up in there, scraping it down because we're going to cook it off. So we want it down to the bottom. That's where the element is in the base of the bowl. All right, 20 grams of butter. It's amazing how through using, through cooking and working in grams for years, I can pretty much eyeball my ingredients now. All right, so we want 
I just don't know. I've had this bacon sitting. I'm not trusting it actually. I had it sitting in the back, but I think it's been there just a little too long. So I'm, I just, yeah. You know, when your family say, can you get this, can you get that? And then they don't eat it. It's very annoying. <laughs> so, fresh pack. <laughs> Let's not risk food poisoning. I uh, had that recently or I had gastro, whatever it was. It is not pleasant. I do not want to repeat that. So, for the sake of a few rashes of bacon, I'm happy to sacrifice it. So, 110 of bacon cut into strips. This is... How much is in here? I love the way it's so hard. 200. So we definitely want half, a bit more than half. So just cut that into strips. This is going to make like um, an onion bacon jam, which is the, goes on the base of this dish. It's oh, delicious. All right. Onions cut into eights. So I've done that quickly off camera as well. So. Cut into eights as in quarters and then quarter again. Um, some dark brown sugar. 20 grams of dark brown sugar. Probably about that lump. Maybe not quite. A little bit more. And then some balsamic vinegar. So, 20 grams of that. Now, you can certainly caramelise onions in a TM6 without vinegar and without the sugar using the high heat function. However, this recipe does it this way. So if you're wanting to cut out sugar in your diet, you could certainly look for TM6 caramelised onions and make them that way rather than doing it this way. Yeah? All right, so let's get that cooking. And then I'm going to move on to make these creamy Hasselback potato bake. So I've already jumped ahead and I've hasselbacked my potatoes. What does that mean? It means I've got them and I've sliced them in little slices without going all the way to the bottom. I've put them into my baking dish and now I'm going to make the creamy sauce that's going to go with it. So this is a recipe I've seen going around um, and being shared on TikTok. And it's an Aussie mum cooks or something, I think it's called. Um, now, uh, I read the recipe and thought, oh yeah, okay, I can thermomix that for sure. So I've done my version and I've added it to create a recipes. If I like it enough and I have the patience, I might actually put it on recipe community for you all um, so that you can add it to your TM6 and make it. Let me know if you want me to do that. All right, so I'm going to bring up the scales because the first of this recipe I've got with grating all the cheese. So we make a creamy, cheesy sauce which we pour over the top of the potatoes and bake them in the oven, which reminds me to turn the oven on. I didn't put that in my method, which was very silly. So, take those out. So it's 180. Pan bake. So already on. What are you talking about, Chloe? They're both on. All right. So I'm weighing in. Created recipes look a little bit different than your normal cookie do recipes, um, but still perfectly easy to follow along. So you can upload your very own recipes. You can certainly, um, if you are creative enough to have your own recipes, you can upload them. Please don't ever put other people's recipes, as in other creators or from direct from cookbooks. There is copyright over doing that sort of stuff. I'm going to put in some cheddar as well. I can get this packet. Who's done this to my packet? Sun. All right. Go. So we're literally going to grate it in the Thermomix. If you have a cutter, you could certainly grate it the cutter way. I, it's going to melt. So to me, it does not matter. Do we chop it or grate it? It's all going to melt. So they're not going to know, right? A uh, handful of chives. So I've gone out to the garden and I've just cut up some chives. So I'm going to throw them in. 
and I'm putting the garlic all in at once. So we're going to grate chop this all together. Am I cooking this? Turn on the other machine. I mean, how are you cooking it? Oh, this! Thank you, Chloe. At least someone's on the ball. Oh. Sometimes I wonder how I function as an adult because there are some days where I have seriously moments of questionable times of doubting myself whether I have a brain or not. But thank you. <laughs> what a hoot. Hey, listen. If nothing, I'm amusing and entertaining, right? Is that not true? <laughs> oh, what is she talking about? What of the machine? <laughs> I did the jam jam. Exactly right. Because she didn't turn it on. Oh, hilarious. Right, I've got to open up this front door. I'm melting. got shoes and socks on. I might have to ground my feet to the tiles and cool myself down a bit. We've been out and about today. There was a, a doggy event on the Gold Coast, a doggy market. So we took Willow out to that. That was good fun. So many caboodles out there, people. My goodness me, what a popular breed. And I can understand. They're a beautiful little dog. There's lots of dachshunds as well, little sausage dogs. There were some massive big dogs. There were some Bernese mountain dogs. There was the other ones that are black that are like even bigger. Um, yeah, I've got to take my shoes off hey, and just ground myself to the cold tiles. Whoa. You're freezing. Where are you? Let me know. I want to come and live where you are. <laughs> Can you adopt me? Oh, that's better. I don't like to have bare feet, but I can't deal. It's too hot today. Or oh, Hunter Valley, Melissa. I'm coming. I'm coming down. I'm going to wing down to you. Do your delivery. <laughs> and stay forever. What do you reckon? All right. So her recipe, I think, had, was it one garlic crushed or something? And I was like, no, no. And in fact, garlic powder's going in as well. So you can put it in all in the list. Um, I was going to add those at the next step, but I've just thought, why? Let's just put it all in. Um, okay, that's everything there. So now I've set it. Little the lid, please, lid here. I've set it, so I hit my little blades here, and I thought eight minutes speed, seven and a half might do it. Cold water. It's amazing how years and years of using a Thermomix, you do get it. That is spot on, right? So there's all the cheese, the herbs, the garlic, Chives, everything is chopped up in there together, right? Mm, easy. Now we want to add in the cream and cream cheese. So here, and I've already added in the other stuff apart from salt and pepper. Uh, yeah, I'm adding in stock. Stock salt enough. So a bit of pepper. Right. And then we want chicken stock paste I've decided on, but you could use veggie if you had it. So I've got the chicken stock paste out because we are using that in the galette as well. So I'm going to be very generous and put a good tablespoon of that in and maybe just a two. All right, so I just freeze those in the freezer. Bring it out when needed. And then we want cream. So we'll use up the last of this one. And cream cheese. Oh, sorry, recording. We keep seem to be dipping out on the internet there. So, yes, you can absolutely do that. That would be fun. Let's do that. I actually, guys, have a demo with a customer who's just purchased. 
Um, we're doing it on Tuesday night live on TikTok. So if you are interested to see what a delivery looks like in the virtual space, seven o'clock Tuesday night on TikTok, come along. Um, Melissa is, uh, sorry, Mel, I think Mel, I'll say Mel, because that's safe. And I could have it wrong there. Um, is a Tupperware manager. So she's bought a Thermomix and we're going to do a joint live. So that'll be fun to see how that turns out. So come and join us on Tuesday night, 7 p.m. on TikTok. All right. What do we need here? We need, oh, cream cheese. Did I put it in the list? I didn't put it in my list. We're putting in the block of cream cheese. Oh, this is a hard one to open, this one. I've had it sitting out for a bit, so it's softened quite well. Okay. I don't think I'd buy this brand again. This is the bigger one, isn't it? Yeah. Really hard to get out of the packet. I think I prefer the Aldi Home brand. Right. That will do. Good, you girls are organising stuff. Right, so that's it. The herbs, the salt, the pepper, the garlic powder, everything is in. So let's now, I thought 30 seconds speed four. I'm going to watch it learn and then I'll update the recipe. Now, I should have broken up that cream cheese a little better. This is a new thing, don't judge me on this one. <laughs> ah! Alright. Oh, somebody's woofing. Doesn't look very wet. Either. I might have to put a bit of water in there, I think. Let's put a little chilled water. Ah! Hang on. You have to press the recipe thermomix so I can figure it out and upload it to the recipe community if you feel like you might make this and want me to, otherwise I'll keep it all to myself. Instantly better. So, I think I'm going to add a little bit more. Because don't forget, we've got... Lovely. Right, I'm going to pour that over these potatoes and get them in the oven ready. Yum! I will let you know how it tastes first. <laughs> so, it's quite a thick mix. But anyway, it's all going to get nice and warm in the oven and melt all over these delicious little potatoes and become a yummy potato bake. I don't see how it couldn't. I mean, I'm still a big fan of gratin dauphinoise. It's one of my favourites, but... I'm all about potatoes. So when I see people making yummy looking potatoes, I want to be part of that. I want to be in. I wonder if I reread that recipe. No, it just says chicken stock powder. So, uh, but my pure cream is pure cream it's very close to almost being like butter so that could be the big difference there why am i using this really small spatula it's a bit silly isn't it meanwhile there's a whole conversation going on i am making the chicken galette olivia yes i am but i'm also making it's one of these videos that's going around and being shared. Oh, yum. Of uh, Hasselback potato bag, basically. 
Alright, let's whip that up to top speed to flip that off the way. Okay. So that was step one with the thing, then you take the thing off, you're gonna let it reduce very much your bacon jam, yeah? So I've just skipped ahead and this time I remembered to turn it on. <laughs> I'm sure it's gonna melt wonderfully too. I'm very excited. Yum, yum. And, and like I say, I've got this cooking as well as the galette. So it's a very indulgent dinner tonight. But as long as it's sometimes, that's absolutely fine in my opinion. One of my darling consultants um, is Noni at Thermofit. And she says 80-20. It's 80-20. So you've got to be good 80% of the time. Tonight is the 20% that we're going to be a bit cheeky. All right. And don't forget, I've got all the cheese in there as well. So... Let's see what it turns out like. Mm. Oh. Very garlicky. Yum, yum. All right, so let's get that in. Give it a head start on the galette. Okay, so next step, that while that's cooking, uh, let's give this bowl, do I need to clean this? I'm thinking the next step of the galette recipe, so don't forget, and someone, I brought this to someone's attention the other night, you can scroll the recipe and go to, we're at the chicken filling. You know what, I'm gonna leave that. That's just cheese, butter, stuff. That's all sort of creaminess that's gonna be in this pie anyway. I don't see a problem. So now we're going to actually use this to steam the chicken. That's the next step. It's been a while since I've made this. I've got to say, I have a feeling it's even close to two years since I've made it. But don't think for a minute I haven't dreamt about it often, but it is a sometimes meal. It's definitely not an every week meal. Uh, because, you know, flaky pastry, lots of butter, cream, all the things. A definite sometimes dish. Yes, we are steaming our chicken and sweet potato. Okay. To aroma and weigh in chicken tenderloins. So I bought a pack here that is actually 600 grams of weight. It does ask for 500. I'm just going to cook it. Um, I shouldn't use my good knife to do that, but anyway. So remember when you're putting things in your aroma, leave room for the steam to come up. So I place things like this in a diagonal across each other type pattern, just to make sure that the steam is gonna come up through those holes and cook it. Otherwise, if you cover it completely, you'll have very cooked underneath and quite raw on top. Now, the other thing I will say with this recipe too, is that the chicken doesn't cook completely, that's perfectly fine because it's going to be cooking again in the oven. All right, so, yes, have you noticed my new kitchen tap? I totally forgot to say, my husband is the cleverest man. I am so blessed. Not only is he a wallpaper king, but he's given me this beautiful tap with the shower head, which I just love. Uh, we put one in our home we lived in two years ago, but the house at Varsity, we could not put the new tap in. So, yes, well spotted. New tap. Who this? Happy girl. All right. Uh, cubed sweet potato going in. Whatever I've got, I'll put it in. I don't care. It's a bit over, it's fine. Then we want to sprinkle that with a little bit of thyme, because thyme is a beautiful herb with uh, chicken and a bit of salt and pepper. And it specifically says two pinches of salt and two pinches of pepper. Um, you put as much salt and pepper as you want. Seasoning is king. Right. So 
of these time I'll leave on the stick so I can actually remove those and see them there just to give it the flavor but if there's a bit too much time in there it can be a little overpowering that's just my thought so I'm hooting down the main road And then lid on. So you don't need to worry about the tray. And we're cooking that for 10 minutes. So here we are. We're trying, trying <laughs> to time this all at the same time, which isn't always easy, but we're doing pretty good. Um, oh, darling. Oh, you're a hairdresser colorist, babe. I'm one of them. Um, let's see you. Let's see you. Damn. Follow you back, sweet. Um, listen, get your partner to see it. Show them my videos. What is the hesitation? Um, who does the cooking? What power tools do they have sitting in a shed that they never use? Just, just ideas. Um, we also like to say, seek forgiveness, not permission. <laughs> yeah, a bit of a distance in the back. Paul recording an Instagram can't see. Let me share with you my new tap. So here it is. It's one of these big fancy ones that has like a showery thing. Um, and for the odd few people that come over and have their hair done, they will appreciate that uh, new attachment. Yes, why, why do they need convincing? Talk to me, let me know, let's nut it out and figure out how we can get you a thermomix. Because if you really want one, and it will help your life be simpler and easier. I'm here to help you. And let me know where you're located as well. Can I come and show them? Um, there's plenty of videos on my socials which you can show and share. Uh, just trying to find that lid. That's that lid. Let me know. in there nicely now when we cook this we're going to do it on hmm, what did they tell you to cook it on let's have a look at the recipe detail not the scales recipe detail so dough on baking paper roll to a circle put it onto a large baking tray all right. Oh my God, those potatoes smell good already. Um, what shall I do? Can I do baking paper on pizza tray? I think I might do okay. So no, I'm not making pizza. I'm going to build this on the pizza tray tonight, I think. Trying to keep myself in a round circle. Because for anyone that's followed me for a while knows, I am not very good at round circles. I'm very rustic. Anthony, this apron, you can't buy it unless you find one on Facebook Marketplace like I did. And I love it. I absolutely love it. But it was a, a find on Facebook Marketplace. The one that they currently sell, there's two actually. One of them I would not recommend. It's calico fabric. And it's really like when you wash it, you're going to spend 10 hours lining it. <laughs> um, the other is our cute little denim uh, one with the um, like leather look. Straps. I don't wear it very often. It's my demo apron. It's our official apron. But um, I do tend to like to brighten up my lives with me in colour. And there is, I have the rainbow. I've got a blue one. I have 
green. I have about three different types of green. I have the pink, I've got a red, I have an orange. The red one was a gift from a, a beautiful customer. The orange one was a gift from another beautiful customer. She actually got it from the UK for me. And um, yeah, very spoiled. I have too many. I have, it's a bit like my spatulas. So that's a jam done. Right, so once you put that in a bowl and set it aside, well, I'm just gonna leave it in there because I'm just gonna pour that straight out onto our pastry. So, oh, this fogged up. Smell, hey, Jules. <laughs> I know. Look, I own iron. I have not had it out since we've moved into this house and we've been here six months. I don't iron. If I iron, it's a cranky lady and it's only because I have to. Um, now, I think I can put my cream away. I might make a cup of coffee because we've got a little bit of time, I think. Or maybe I'll wait. I'll wait. All right. Corks. What we do is we stir even cooking and then it says to add mushrooms. I forgot about that step. So I don't do fungi, so we're gonna kick on and leave that out of the equation. And then we're making a bit of a roux with stock and oh yes, I did need the cream. My bad, that's not enough. And then we build this galette. Um, I might leave this for that extra time. Just until the, everything's cooking in the bowl, only because I don't want that pastry to feel my warmth at the minute, because I am warm. All right, so we need to wait out this part and then move on. So what can we talk about for the next eight? Apologies for the constant interruptions to the live. It's for sewing, quite right, Melissa. Yeah, that's the only reason I'd use one if I was a so uh, if I could sew. Yes, I, ha I do. I have a huge collection of aprons. I have a lot in the drawer that I don't even really look at because I have my favourites. And yeah. Plus, once I've worn it, it goes in the wash. So I need one for the next day because I don't wash every day, although it feels like I wash every day. So have your paper ready for rolling out of your, um, oh, that's what I can do, put some things away that we don't need anymore, that's for sure. Um, yes, have your paper ready to roll out your pastry because you wanna get this part done as quick as you can because it does start to melt a bit. needs to be hotter. All right, uh, recipe detail. What does this cook on? Two hundred. I reckon the potatoes would go to two hundred too. So I'm doing it. Marble rolling pin is amazing. Yes. Yes. I have a. I have a few different denim ones, but I have one that's from. I bought it and got my name, oh, I've well, got Thermobex put on it. It's um, Cargo Crew, I got it from. They have lovely aprons, actually. Cargo Crew, I'm glad you love your TM6, Chloe. That is so good, sticky sesame chicken, isn't it? That's another winner. I love that. So share what you're making, share your favorites. Let's all tell each other about these great recipes so that we all get the most out of our Thermomix. Brilliant, love it. Love, love, love. All right. Uh, we don't need these, we don't need that. Trying to keep my things as alphabetized as I can. Um, let me get the chicken stock paste out that we need and then put this back in the fridge, uh, freezer rather. 
teaspoon. Well, let's give it a good teaspoon because I like being generous with my stock. And into the freezer she goes. Like I said, don't stress if your chicken isn't totally cooked at the end of this because it's going in the oven and it's going to cook even further. What's going on with fluffy cattails out there? dropped anything today <laughs> I love the black I love this black see it is actually covered in flour at the moment and you cannot even tell I love that last year's one was shiny like this and look I love my classic white don't get me wrong but the black one last year was shiny like this and every fingerprint every flower every mark terrible I know a huge bottle of rice wine vinegar so if I drop that one, we're in trouble. Hopefully I don't do that again. What a dope. All right. So I need uh, butter. How much butter? 40 grams. So. So this this part makes a nice creamy chicken base and using the butter flour of course you're making that roux um, which thickens the sauce I'll just cut it into bits oh this is from the child that hasn't come home yet yes Gotta love it when your kids want to be hanging out with other people. <laughs> I'm going Gold Coast for Christmas camping. Can you bring your thermo? Is it safe, Chloe? Absolutely, you can. Um, where are you? Tra are you driving? Are you driving? Um, we do have travel bags you can buy, or if you can get your hands on the base. Oh, Dimity, you are beautiful. Um, base of a Thermomix box, yes, um, base of a Thermomix box, at worst, um, sit it on the back seat and put the seatbelt on it. So transportation mode is in the settings. So go to the three little lines up the top we call the burger. Go to settings, scroll down, and you'll see transportation mode. Now your bowl with the lid must be in place before you turn it into transportation mode because it's going to lock it in and protect those arms. So yes, very good. Settings, transportation mode, and then you'll activate, and then you hold the silver selector button in until it says Thermomix will now shut down. That's exactly what you do. <coughs> All right, I'll leave it. 
leave it at the dough part, ready to go. Where in the Gold Coast are you coming to? I have to come say hello. Oh, where's my water? <coughs> All right, so we're going to set that aside. So look, that looks not bad cooked, right? But I guarantee you, it probably won't be fully cooked. But don't stress because it's going back in the oven to cook again. Please don't tell me I'm making a huge mistake perching that there. All right, now we're going to throw that water out. But just put your bowl straight back on because we're going to carry on cooking here. Just put that aside for a minute. So, butter. Like I say, this is a sometimes dish. It's not an everyday once a week dish. Because it is, it is a bit treaty. 30 grams of plain flour. Chicken stock paste. All veg, whatever you have. If you don't make, you don't have to make all the stocks, but I thoroughly recommend it because they're amazing. Cream, excuse me. All right, I use pure cream for everything. Water. that up together to make our roux. So, four minutes, 90 degrees before. So we're going to make a nice thick roux. Ah! Chevron's not far from me. I love Chevron. There's some really great restaurants there too. Um, Casa Brazil. One of my darling girls in my team is Brazilian. And... Uh, yeah, she took me there for lunch. We had lunch there the other day, actually. We had a little lunch together and a chat. And yeah, beautiful. Very good indeed. Casa Brazil. Really cool Brazilian food. And they play live music there at night, so very entertaining as well, which is good fun. In, in pieces. So, while I'm standing here in Dream World, There's my scissors. Just cut the chives, they're fine. I'm just going to cut my bits of chicken into pieces because they are little tender lines. Oh, move that in. And actually take out the bigger piece of thyme because, like I said, it can be a little overpowering. So don't be afraid to get it in there in on the stalk for getting that nice infusion of flavour. but then taking that back out again so it's not overpowering the dish. But you definitely want some thyme in there because it is a beautiful flavour, chicken and thyme. That's another bit of cheese. And yeah, I just use my scissors to chop up the chicken rather than taking it out and dirtying another board. in here if you're a lover of mushrooms. Fraser! <gasps> be careful. Just be careful. There's been so many dingo attacks up there. Be careful. Oh! Snakes. My goodness. What's going on? People going to Fraser and standing on a snake. Be careful of the dingoes too. That's all I will say. My goodness. There's been a horrific attack there recently. Um, and that's just the ones we hear about. Alright, so that's ready to go into there. Put that 
there. How's my potatoes looking? Better. Oh, I think 200 is definitely the temperature for those potatoes, not 180. Let me make some notes. So, add water. Not 180, 200. Right. Make some notes there so I can fix that recipe. And I might put it on recipe community. Yeah. It's terrible, isn't it? You live in the, not that far away and I've never been. One day. All right. So there, see that lovely, thick, creamy consistency that that makes it? And then we put this in. Carefully. Yeah. I like living on the edge, can you tell? Okay. And then just 10 seconds of mixing that around. Now we've got to get the pastry happening. So, I should have had it out of the fridge a second ago. So many. That's okay. Okay, so we've got flour off there. So now, we've got to roll that out to a circle. It says 30 by 40 centimetres, my goodness. Uh, now, Goes the rustic, rustic circle roller. I need a bit of flour. Dang, never! I just put it back. So you, I can see all the nice big chunks of butter in there. That's what you want. That's what makes it flaky. Move that out of the way. <laughs> oh, we're losing shape. Oh, it's not too bad so far. So. This is a great one to make if you have anyone coming over for dinner and you want to knock their socks off. It is very impressive. It's very delicious. It's very tasty. I do highly recommend it. Okay, I reckon that could be pretty good. So, so without that is what's going to give it the flakiness. You can just see little lumps in there. That is the butter. That is what makes our pastry flaky. All right, so in this now, we put our bacon and onion jam first and try and keep it to the center. it out but not all the way to the edge because you're going to be folding that pastry in ready for a pre-clean so 
it spread it out nicely. Right. And then we want to get this our pie filling part. This would be delicious as little individual pies too. But this pastry may be not so strong. You might want to use a proper puff for that. We'll just pile this chicken bit up on top. Okay, now this should really, you know, if this cooled down a bit, not a bad thing because we're working now with pastry we want to keep coals and hot stuff, right? So, in fact, what does it say? Set aside to cool. <laughs> so there you go, set it aside to let it cool. Obviously for the live, I want to push on. So... All right, set it aside to cool, preheat your oven. And then I'm going to mush that down to meet that circle there, okay? And then, gosh, I should have done this before I started doing this. Slide my pizza tray in underneath, carefully. All right. And then you want to tuck this dough around the edge, right? So, I'm gonna bring it in and pinch it. And, you know, it does not, you do not. And remember, you're dealing normally with cool down ingredients. I've got it piping, piping hot here. So just pinching that in. Doesn't matter which way, really, it really does not. It all comes out and looks amazing when it's finished. All right, so. And then we need to brush that, I think, don't we? Yep, done that, done that. Uh, fold over, cleaning the pastry, create a crust, brush it with milk, all right? That's actually not listed in the ingredients, and that's another flaw in the recipe, actually. I would have had that out ready. All right. So brushing that with a bit of milk. And I'll take a quick before photo so I can share this with you all after. And then the after, once it comes out of the oven, all cooked and delicious. Oh my goodness, it's ice cream man. Haven't heard that around here before. she goes. The smell is amazing. And I've got to be honest, I'm smelling those delicious potatoes. Take away the fog. All right, guys. So that is chicken galette. That is pastry. One of my tips around it is if you want to do pastry, make sure you have the time. Okay. It is a time consuming thing. Um, again, it's one of my pick those battles. Pick your battle. If you don't really want to make it, there's nothing wrong with buying it. But I do highly recommend buying the butter puff pastry pre-made. Look at the ingredients. Uh, the normal puff pastry has about 14 ingredients. The butter puff has about five or six. So again, you do you, you pick your battles, you choose how you want to eat. I'm not here to judge anyone. Let me go see ice cream man down the street. Uh, but I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, please reach out to me anytime and um, I will let you go and come back and share this replay later. Thanks everyone. So the family chicken galette is an amazing dish. Great for dinner parties. It makes a heap too. I uh, wasn't terribly happy with the result of the potatoes. 
let's just put it this way. Some of these hacks are great. Some of them, maybe not so much. I'm going to definitely tweak it and look at uploading it to Recipe Community for you all. Anyway, enjoy.